Spider-Man No Way Home saw the return of not only Tom Holland's Peter Parker, but Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's Peters as well. Seeing the interesting dynamic between the three Spider-Men shows us that despite being the same person and having the same motivations for doing the things that they do, they are vastly different when it boils down to their characters. This was necessary and quite frankly, I'm glad that Marvel didn't try to change the characters to fit the arc of the story. The way how every Spider-Man slings a web a different style, swings a different way, and generally the way they behave and speak is an apt reflection on what they have gone through in their universe, and it is important to acknowledge that this part of them still exists. And, for all we know, they could make a comeback in their own standalone films in the future. Seeing as how Marvel is trying to integrate this system into all of their latest movies, maybe the idea of seeing the Toby and Andrew back on the big screen might not sound so far-fetched. After all, No Way Home showed us that these characters still had a life of their own and very subtly hinted at things we could possibly see in the future. Let's start from the start, the original Spider-Man trilogy. This masterpiece was the pinnacle of what superhero movies could accomplish, by establishing in the main character a sense of moral responsibility and how giving into it can cost them so much. This was something that Spider-Man 1 and 2 excelled at. They showed people that being given superpowers doesn't solve all of your problems, it creates more. We saw this when we saw that Peter Parker struggled with college, barely made enough to pay his rent and never having the relationship he wanted. That is what being Spider-Man costs. It costs him his freedom, his career, his friends and his life. But over the course of the three main movies, we see that Peter tries to get everything figured out and lead the life he wants without sacrificing his morals. He made this pretty clear in No Way Home when he told Garfield's Andrew that he made it work. Being a Spider-Man for so long that he was now well into his 40s, you have to think that he has some insight on how to settle the dichotomy. A more rational and experienced Spider-Man would be a fantastic take on the character, and who better to take on the role than this Toby himself? This way, you bring a fan favourite back into action and develop a new character arc. We have only ever seen Spider-Man as this scruffy teenager with a witty sense of humour. It would be very refreshing to see Peter out of college for once. But in all honesty, if there is a person who deserves another shot at playing Spider-Man, it has to be Andrew Garfield. The man put his entire passion into the film, which unfortunately turned out to be less exhilarating. Andrew was a pristine Spider-Man, and it wasn't his fault he had an underwhelming story. But his performance in No Way Home really showed that despite being in a cast of elite actors, he couldn't be overshadowed. Personally, I loved The Amazing Spider-Man 2 because it brought something new and refreshing to the scene. I'm not just talking about a more vibrant New York or the new rogues gallery or even the phenomenal stunt work. More than anything, this movie brought emotion. The very powerful dynamic between Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy was one of the most pivotal pieces of the story. Since the impact of Peter's relationship wasn't really stressed upon in the first trilogy, I mean besides the fact he struggled to bond with MJ, the story managed to do just that. It pitted this very compelling romance against the backdrop of a Spider-Man film. It doesn't eclipse the Spider-Man part of the movie, it makes the character more compelling. This Peter has to go through the immense responsibility of being Spider-Man, but unlike Toby's Peter, he has someone there for him, someone to remind him that all is not lost to give him hope. So it makes it even more tragic when Gwen is ripped from him. He had no moral compass anymore, nothing really left to fight for. When we meet him in No Way Home, Andrew's character is still this tormented Peter that couldn't quite get over it. This would be a very interesting place to pick up on to see how he is coping with the loss. It made him bitter and resentful and like he said in the movie, he stopped pulling his punches and had to carry on alone. Maybe in the next instalment of the movie, we can finally see him come to terms with her death. This could play out in a very interesting way if they choose to throw in somebody like Black Cat into the mix. 
Who knows, maybe taking on the street-level anti-hero could be the light to guide him back to a normal life. And finally, that brings us to Tom Holland's Spider-Man. We know that the theme of responsibility runs deep in Spider-Man lore, but there in his first two movies, we have seen Peter do anything but. He is usually reaping the rewards of being under the wing of Tony Stark, gets a custom-built suit, an invitation to join the Avengers, and even fighting off his enemies. The villains in the first two Spider-Man movies sees him go against people that have a bone to pick with Iron Man, but treats Spider-Man as an afterthought. So this means that Peter spends the entire first two films basically playing an errand boy. He has no association with his villains and no meaningful relationship to build on, like in Toby's and Andrew's movies. But that all changed with No Way Home. In the beginning of the movie, he didn't run off to Doctor Strange for help concealing his identity, but at the end of the movie, after seeing what it all cost him. The destruction of his city, the detriment to the lives of his friends, and the death of Aunt May finally showed Peter what it means to be held accountable for the choices you make, and he had to learn that probably the hardest of all. Toby lost his friends, Andrew lost his love, but Tom lost everything. He lost everyone. As sad as that is, it does open up a host of new stories to explore. It sometimes seems that with the introduction of the multiverse and alien invaders, people have forgotten what friendly neighborhood Spider-Man is all about. Since Peter has lost his identity, that includes his friends, his family, and even the Avengers. This means that there will be no fancy adventure to derail this Spider-Man from fighting small-time crooks and petty thieves. This could be the perfect opportunity for the writers to introduce Stanley Carter or the Sin Eater. Also, let's not forget that Spider-Man is not the only superhero that dons a red costume and fights crime on the streets of New York. Yes, I'm talking about Daredevil. Knowing that Charlie Cox is reprising his role as the man without fear, this could be the start of a marvelous friendship. Anyway guys, those were my theories about what we could expect from the next Spider-Man movie. Feel free to leave your ideas in the comments below. Don't forget to like and for more content like this, keep it at KRTV.